Oh! <laughs> Hello again! You're back for another story. Well. I won't keep you from it. Swallowed whole. Calvin yawned before he opened his eyes. He'd fallen asleep on the beach, and he could already tell it was dark out before committing to being awake. And moist. It might storm soon. He decided it would be better to get up now. Calvin stretched, but not far. His arms stopped, pinned neatly to his sides. Have I been rolled up in my beach towel and thrown into the trash heap again? He wondered to himself. He blinked his eyes open. Oh shit, no stars! It's really gonna pour any second. He was starting to worry a bit now. He'd not prepared for this disaster. A deep, guttural moan followed by a sloshing sound gave him further pause. Oh great, it's thundering already, and I left the clothes out in the backyard. Calvin remained trapped for a while before he realized that he was not rolled up into a towel and thrown into trash again. That couldn't possibly happen a fifth time. Then he realized his brand new phone was in his swim shorts. With no small effort and a fair amount of uncomfortable maneuvering, he was able to pull it out and shimmy it up to his face. A notification was blinking that the storage was full. Already? he wondered. Oh, it's a video. A very long video from Charlie. He pushed play. There she was, looking down at him through his own phone. Calvin! I was trying to have a serious conversation with you and you fell asleep. You're an asshole. This is for you. This is for you when you wake up. It's over. The video panned up and back toward the water as she placed it on a sleeping body, his own sleeping body, and distantly, that of a lumbering giant animal wriggling up from the water. What could it be? A sea lion? The video was done. He watched it again twice more to see what was coming his way. It was definitely a sea lion. Calvin had been swallowed whole by a sea lion. He still had service wherever he was. That was good. This phone was a bit of a lemon. If that one video filled it up, that wasn't great. Oh well. Time to try and sort this whole rescue thing out. As he was trying to get into his contact list, a call came through. It was his friend Mark. Mark, I'm so glad. Dude, where are you? Did you forget it's poker night? The guys are getting restless. Mark, I need help. I'm inside a sea lion. Calvin's voice was strained by an ever so slight growing panic. There was a pregnant pause. Fuck you, man. This is like that time you got me to take you to the hospital for bee sting and I miss bowling. Fool me once, asshole. Calvin nodded to himself slightly, feeling a phantom swelling in his tongue at the memory. He would never drink nectar directly from flowers again. That was a lesson hard learned. But I'm allergic to bees. I nearly died. I mean, yes, I guess it's like that? His voice came out as a squeak. Exactly! Fuck off! Mark hung up the phone. Calvin was speechless. Maybe he could call Charlie. He stretched his finger to the phone to scroll through the contacts. There she was. He hit call. It rang four times before she picked up. It's too late, Cal, she said. No, no, wait, Charlie, wait, don't hang up. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I need help. I'm stuck inside a sea lion. Another pregnant pause. Wow, she said, stunned. Nothing's ever your fault, is it? What? Take some responsibility for once, Calvin, please. You always have some half-baked excuse ready to try to get me to come back, like, give me up my dog or whatever. But it won't work this time. We're done. We're done! Charlie smashed the end call button with all the anger in her thumb. Calvin took his own moment of silence. Maybe his boss would listen. Martha always had an open ear for Calvin. He fumbled through to her number. Dial. Calvin? She asked tentatively. Hey, Martha, he said as calmly as he could. What's up? She wasn't used to getting calls from Calvin outside his co-managerial work at the Olive Garden. I'm in a bind, and I was wondering if you could maybe help me. 
Jesus Christ, Cal. You don't work till Monday and you're already trying to get time off? What's it like to have such an easy life? She said tersely. No, I'm not. Really. I'm, I'm stuck inside a sea lion. Please help me. Calvin's panic was growing. Right. Right. Okay, Cal. I'll fill your shifts, but I'm taking this as a resignation. Gah. Grow up, buddy. Get your priorities in order. Click. Well, I do owe my parents a lot of money and rent, he said quietly to himself. My parents, he thought. They would be the only ones who might be able to help him. He fumbled to call them. Mom! Mom! Oh, God, Mom! Thank God! Calvin's voice was giddy with hope now. Yes, dear? Why are you in such a tizzy? I'm stuck, Mom, and I need help. I'm stuck inside a sea lion. That's nice, dear. You kids sure do get into some funny business these days, she said sagely. I, I need help. I really need help. Is Dad there? One moment, dear. Stanford! Our son is on the line. He says he's doing sea lines. He wants to talk to you. He's coming, dear. No, Mom, I'm inside a sea lion. Yes, that's what I said. Here you go, dear. Calvin, said his father in a deep voice. Are you doing drugs? No, Dad. No, I'm stuck in a sea lion. Why will no one help me? The giddiness faded back into a nervous whine. His father sighed patiently. <sighs> no one will help you until you learn to help yourself, son. Your mother and I, we've given you everything. We've coddled you. We did everything for you. We did crazy things like enrolling you in grade school. When we should have made you do it yourself. That ends now. Today, you're a man. Calvin gulped down his feelings as best he could. Today, I'm a man. This time, Calvin hung up the phone. They were probably right. He found his way into this mess somehow. He had to find his way out. He needed to try and force his arms upward, pull himself out of here. The world shook suddenly. He felt jerked around. Calvin prayed to all the gods he could suddenly find convenience in. Please, please, please be a rescue team. Please be a rescue team. The sounds of growling, tussling, chomping around him. Suddenly there was a light. It was blinding. It was mitigated by a large silhouette. As his eyes readjusted to the light, Calvin could see that the silhouette was bear-shaped. He put his hands together in grateful prayer. He sat up and looked at the bear. Thank you, bear. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The bear leaned in, almost as though he was bowing, you're welcome. But the bear didn't stop as it leaned in. It leaned in all the way and swallowed Calvin whole. The end.